Hello there, wherever you're viewing from. Range Ronin here, and today I am taking the Uberti 1858 Remington New Army Conversion Replica to the range. So, ride along with me. I'll tell you all about the revolver, and we'll see how well it shoots. The history of the Remington 1858 revolver includes three progressive models. The Remington Beals, Army and Navy, manufactured from 1860 to 1862. The 1861, Army and Navy, manufactured from 1862 to 1863. And the new model, Army and Navy, manufactured from 1863 to 1875. The original 1858 Remington Beals Army Percussion Revolver was chambered in 44 caliber and had an 8-inch octagonal barrel, whereas the 1858 Remington Beals Navy Revolver was a 6-shot 36 caliber with a 7-and-1-half-inch octagonal barrel. Due to the American War between the states, on August 17, 1862, E. Remington and Sons delivered the first 300 Beals Army Percussion Revolvers to the Army Ordnance Department. In 1868, the 1858 Beals Army Revolver was redesigned to fire metallic cartridges, the 46 rimfire, and the 1858 Remington New Army was born. Remington paid a royalty fee to Smith & Wesson, who owned the Rollin White patent on board through revolver cylinders for metallic cartridge use. The 1858 Remington New Army chambered five rounds of 46 caliber and was eventually chambered in 45 Long Colt and also 4440 WCF or Winchester Centerfire by gunsmiths. The original 1858 Remington New Army was a large revolver akin to the Colt Dragoons and weighed almost three pounds and with an eight inch barrel was quite well suited for cavalry and long distance work as it was sighted in at 75 yards. It was a robust revolver and served well in numerous wars, including the American Civil War and in other countries. It is recorded that William F. Buffalo Bill Cody used an ivory handled New Model Army 44, serial number 73,293 from 1863 until 1906. He gave it to his ranch foreman with a handwritten note which stated, it never failed me. I have always loved the firearms from the Civil War era and the first time firing one, a reproduction of the Colt Navy 36 caliber percussion revolver that belonged to a friend who was also a replica of a Confederate soldier once he got into costume. I was hooked on him. Although percussion pistols are fun to shoot, they also get very dirty, actually filthy, when doing so and require an enormous amount of cleaning to get them back into pristine shape. Shooting a percussion revolver induced my appreciation for revolvers that fired cartridges. While I could never enjoy the ownership of an authentic 1858 Remington New Army conversion revolver, Uberti has brought a replica of one to the table and a fine replica it is, with one caveat that I will cover later in this review. The 
Verity has been manufacturing replicas of early firearms for quite a while and has a reputation of creating replica firearms close to the original design, but with more modern steel and manufacturing. A spark ignited in me to acquire one of these replicas. While you see a lot of reproductions of the Colt Peacemaker, you do not see replicas of the 1858 Remington New Army conversion revolvers running around except in particular circles like cowboy action shooting and Civil War reenactments. In other words, I had to have one. A quick search of Uberti's website drew me to many early revolver replicas. The 1858 Remington New Army conversion was but one. I knew that to begin my journey with early Remington revolvers, of which there are four major players, the 1858 Remington New Army conversion would be in the lead due to using the common 45 long Colt cartridge. When Remington converted the 1858 Army revolver to fire metallic cartridges, several changes had to take place. A new breech face with a loading gate was added. The loading gate prevents the metallic cartridges from exiting the cylinder until they need to be. The frames were dovetailed to permit the insertion of an injector assembly. The shell ejector rod has a lever that is locked into place by what used to be the loading lever. Releasing the loading lever from its front detent and moving it downward allows the ejection rod to move rearward into the chamber to push the expended shells out of the cylinder, one at a time. Unloading the revolver is only allowed at the half cock position which allows the cylinder to spin freely. Once loading plunger can also be used to lock the barrel into place as it would be when loading a ball into the chamber, but it is no longer used for that purpose. A different means of removing and installing the cylinder pin was designed. With the loading lever released from its detent and rotated downward, the cylinder pin can be removed and installed. Essentially, the loading lever prevents the cylinder pin from moving forward under recoil. A substantial hammer strikes an internal firing pin to ignite the primer and send the bullet down range. As with all revolvers of this type, the hammer is to rest only on an empty chamber. Bill Ruger was not around to add a hammer block, but his essence is alive in this Uberti replica, and which is the only caveat, however discreet, with this firearm. Uberti has installed a hammer block into the hammer that is activated by a small screw. The screw is turned clockwise to activate the hammer block. This screw will never be touched by a screwdriver in my hands. Unlike cap and ball models, which had safety detents built into the cylinder, this model does not. 
Augusta Uberti believes that we are not smarter than our forefathers and opted to install this ridiculous safety mechanism. Any single action shooter with his or her salt knows that you only rest the hammer on an empty chamber. Pull the hammer to the half cock position, load one, skip one, and then load four. Then, pull the hammer all the way rearward, place a thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger, and with the thumb, allow the hammer to slowly come to rest on an empty chamber. To protect the firing pin, and to prevent the firing pin from peening the inside of the frame, you should use snap caps for dry fire practice. I like the Azum brand. They chamber easily and fall from the chamber with ease. The primer material is soft, absorbs the impact of the firing pin very well, and rebounds to the original shape nicely. I have tried the Tipton brand, but the brass primer, although softer than the firing pin, deforms to a point to where the snap cap is ineffective. The internal firing pin, by the way, is spring-loaded. And speaking of triggers, the Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver has a crisp and consistent 2.5 pound trigger pull on my particular model. There is also no take-up in the trigger. You had better be ready to shoot when you press the trigger. The trigger is slightly rounded with no serrations, as would be on the original. The trigger guard is pure brass, which complements the smooth walnut grips and blued steel of the revolver. And speaking of blued steel, the blued finish on the revolver is excellent, with slight variances between parts of the revolver. A long 8-inch barrel provides a good sight radius. Unfortunately, the advantages of the long sight radius is offset by the very thin front sight. Sighting down this pistol is like looking down the hood of a 1959 Cadillac. That 8 inch barrel just seems to go on forever. The front sight, a tape unit that is mortised into the barrel, provides a perfect sight picture when properly aligned with the notch in the top strap. Being mortised, the front sight is windage adjustable, but on a pistol of this nature, some Kentucky windage seems to be more adequate to use. The heavily textured hammer spur provides the necessary grip surface to ensure a positive grip on the hammer with the thumb of either hand. Pulling the hammer produces two clicks, unlike the four clicks of a Colt. These clicks are half cock and full cock, and the hammer spring is substantial. The grip panels are smooth and finely grained walnut. There is enough grip surface to hold on to without slipping the little finger under the grip as is found on many single action revolvers. The grip slopes downward, inward slightly, and flares at the bottom. The grip angle would be, in my opinion, somewhere between a Bisley grip and a Colt Peacemaker grip. A grip screw holds the two panels together nicely at the frame. The serial and catalog number are stamped into the bottom of the grip frame. There are very few markings on the revolver. Cal 45 LC is stamped into the barrel near the frame, just to remind you of what caliber you are shooting. And the manufacturer's name and location is stamped on top of the barrel near the frame. There is also a stamping on the cylinder, but I have not been able to make sense of it. One of the most important parts of any revolver is the forcing cone to cylinder gap also known as the flash gap. According to my set of feeler gauges, the forcing cone to cylinder gap on the Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver is 0.004 inch. That's tight, my friend. The cylinder locks up like a drum. There is absolutely no play when the cylinder is locked in, nor any when the hammer is at rest. Each chamber in the cylinder is also recessed, this is one revolver whose manufacturer has a respect for tolerances. Also, and as important as the forcing cone to cylinder gap on revolvers, is the thickness of the chambers within the cylinder. On this particular model, chamber thickness to the outside of the cylinder is 0.074 inches. Each cylinder detent aligns with the center of a chamber. This means that the actual thickness of each chamber is less than 0. 0.074 inches. In other words, no power loads in these chambers. 
Battery loaded cowboy loads are fine to use in this revolver and ammunition approved by SASS is highly recommended. Ammunition such as that shown will be fine to use in this revolver. The Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver functions flawlessly at the range. The front sight, being quite thin, was hard to see in the fluorescent lighting of the range, and I wasn't expecting any pinpoint accuracy. But the Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver did well enough for me to yearn for some more practice and ammunition. Muzzle lift is negligible due to the long 8-inch barrel 
and the weight of the gun. And the 1858 is very quick to reacquire a target. I soon found out that a true 6 o'clock sight picture was needed, as the first two rounds went high with my usual center of the barrel on the target preferred sight picture. Shooting from a duelist position, standing and one-handed, as any single action revolver is meant to be shot, and once the revolver told me how it wanted to be held, I was able to produce a good group. Needless to say, that I am impressed with the Uberti 1858 Remington New Army Conversion Revolver, enough to warrant acquiring additional Remington and Colt early revolvers to comprise a good collection of key early cartridge and percussion pistols. I'll produce video reviews of those in the future. If you long for a single action revolver and just want something out of the norm, the Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver just might interest you. Uberti also has a nice line of open top conversions that might interest you as well, as they do me. The Uberti 1858 New Army Conversion Revolver is well made in a quality piece of hardware and Uberti is known for its handiwork. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for a bit. I plan on also reviewing the Remington 1858 Army Percussion Revolver, the 1875 Improved Army, and the 1890 New Model Army Cartridge Revolver sometime in the future. Until that time, stay safe out there.